open to life, but not actively trying to have a kid, and Monica got pregnant. How we take care of the land and take care of the animals and just being stewards of that, that part of their education is also so rooted in their faith. I like to see my kids grow, to do things that are good in the world, to see them be good to people around them. And that God is our creator and he has made all this for us. oldest. She's 14. And she's our firstborn. She's our leader. She can talk to a wall. She can make friends with anybody. She go to a playground with 100 strangers and she'll leave with 100 friends. That's her personality. She's very creative. She'll get this idea and then she wants to see it through. She wants to see it as a finished product. She's just her brain, her mind's eye. She can get an idea and run with it. So Marie is our 12-year-old. Uh, Marie is our bookworm. She's always been more of an introverted girl. She has the gentlest heart. Oh, yeah. She is very empathetic to people. She can see people where they're at, and she can meet them there. Lee is our only boy. He is sandwiched by two girls on either side. So Lee... Um, He's 10. He is 10. He, he He's our boy. We say that's yeah. our boy. Even his little sisters will say, my boy's at baseball. My boy has a birthday party to go to. They, they call him... Lee boy. Lee boy. That's my boy. Um, and he is well doted on and cared for by everyone in the family. Anne is seven. She's becoming this person who also, I feel like, is a tender-hearted person. We just have a lot of emotions with her right now. And, you know, right now she says, I want to work with babies, and I want to take care of babies, and I want to be a nun who works in an orphanage. And she just, she wants to serve, but she's seven, and she's trying to figure out how she can do that. Elizabeth is our youngest. She is three. She is our blonde, blonde little baby. Came out ready to not get lost in the chaos. Yes, she is yeah. loud, bossy, a typical baby of the family. She, like, people will know that she is the youngest of the five. She is opinionated. She wants things her way. And for whatever reason, she gets it. <laughs> I think as a homeschooler, we were trying to create some kind of structure and schedule. And so we try to go to daily mass in the morning because that kind of gets our day going. If we can't make it to daily mass, we start at our prayer table here at home and we do a family prayer but it just got us going into this schedule. So at first it was, let's try to make First Friday Mass. That was my goal. Like I had some other families that were there First Friday, let's try to be there. And then it turned into, let's be there every Friday. So let's try to get to Daily Mass every Friday. And then um, now we, we try to make it a couple times a week. Um, 
because I see the fruits of it. I, and I encourage a lot of moms with little preschool kids, age kids, like take them to daily mass. It's shorter, you know, it's a good practice. You can sit closer, they can see what's going on at the altar. Ruth and Marie help lead the Chaplet of Divine Mercy um, before mass sometimes. And so just getting up there and building that community there at St. Faustina's, it's it's been great. Travis and I have tried to um, learn more about vocations and have men and women who are discerning religious life around the kids so that they can see that as an option if God is calling them to it. Travis and I um, grew up in the same small town. My dad was a farmer there, um, so we lived in the same area, and we knew each other. We went to school together. Um, our our cl class was uh, graduated with like 120 people, so we knew each other. We knew who each other was. We saw each other at church every week. I didn't. We didn't really know each other well. We had different groups of friends, um, but as we got older, we had classes together. Um, our friend groups started to mix together more with athletics and band. And so, um, but it wasn't until we were in high school and we started taking classes together. We remember being in calculus together in the most advanced math class that our town offered. And our math class was only four of us. So it was Travis and myself and two other boys. One ended up being the best man in our wedding. So it was a very close group. Our math teacher was awesome. And so we just kind of got to know each other more degree and so we kind of graduated we went off on our own paths you know didn't think much of it didn't think we were gonna see each other much after that um, and then I guess he was at boot camp and his mom put something in the church bulletin with his address like hey if you want to send some encouraging letters to Travis here's his address and so my mom saw that in the bulletin. She said, hey, you remember you graduated with Travis? Here's some information. So I wrote him a letter while he was at boot camp, and um, that was my freshman year of college. And so we started writing letters to each other, but not often, but just every now and again, just kind of checking in, seeing how each other was doing. When he was in Iraq, we still communicated, but it was mostly through email. Not hand We did handwrite, but it just took so long to get back and forth to each other. So when he was in Iraq, we were communicating more and more. We were kind of getting to know each other through correspondence. And um, when he came back in Iraq, we decided to start dating. And um, I was very excited. I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. I didn't know I was waiting for. People from high school would be like, wait, who are you dating? Travis, um, the guy from high school? I'm like, yes. Um, most people think we're high school sweethearts when they meet us and they find out we went to high school together. But we're like, no, no, that wouldn't have worked out. God had another plan. He knew we needed to go and do our own things before we were right for each other. When we started dating, I think it was easy for us because we knew each other's background, not necessarily just because we grew up in the same town, but because we knew each other's faith. We knew what our values were, our principles, our beliefs were very similar. Um, there was so much that I, we didn't have to question about each other because we knew that like um, our, our common, so much that we had in common was in our faith. And, and so much of us was centered around that. We were trying to center ourselves so much around Christ. Our faith is very important to our family. I think so much of what we do day to day, how we interact with other people, the activities we choose to do, how we spend our time, like we all try to start our day with our, uh, with prayer and like reminding ourselves who we are and who God has created us to be. And then also what God has taught us about what we need to do out in the world, how we need to treat others, how we can love others. So it's, I mean, as a homeschooler, um, it's in the books we read, it's in the prayers we say in the morning, it's in our poetry we say, it's in our history books. There's just, there's so much that our faith has intertwined in with our curriculum, with what we teach day to day, but not just in the books, but also in how we teach our kids outside, like how we take care of the land and take care of the animals. And um, just being stewards of that, that part of their education is also so rooted in their faith and that God is our creator and He has made all this for us.
one of my favorite things about um, being the oldest in a big family is probably all the responsibility that I get because I have to always keep a track on my siblings and have to make sure that they're doing good things, which is helping me do good things and serving others and helping my mom with anything. It brings me like graces from God and so that I know that I might go to heaven because I'm helping out. As a father, I love holding babies. Like that's like, it's sort of weird. We'll go places and other people will have a baby and they're like, here, Monica, hold the baby in. And Monica will give me the baby because she knows how much I enjoy holding other kids. I like to see my kids grow, to do things that are good in the world, to see them be good to people around them, to see them develop as human beings. And, and, and as, I, as you see the kids grow up, it's, it's actually, I've grown to be more of a, someone who tries to nurture them spiritually. So before it was, let's build good athletes, smart kids. And then it's like, let's build golly kids. You know, that is the funnest thing to see is whenever you see a kid do adoration properly. It's like, I didn't have that as a kid. I didn't know what adoration was, but to see my kids pray, to see them go to church, to serve, to see them in the community and do good, as a father, that is fulfilling. More fulfilling than them being valedictorian at school, more important than winning some type of MVP championship, watching them serve God and do God's will. I think I average probably close to 70 hours a week paid at work. And then there's probably 10 to 15 hours every week that we do working around the farm. Um, so there's a lot of things that get neglected on a weekly basis, but then we, we make it up on you know other times. And so in my day-to-day, -day, like on my, my actual job, I work outside all the time. I drive to location, I work out outside, I drive back home or I drive to a hotel. Uh, so uh, there's a lots of physical labor involved there. There's value in that because you're teaching them that you're part of a family, it takes sacrifice. There's, there's gonna be good value in this land whenever everything is cleaned up. There's gonna be good value in the cows, but it takes time to get there. And with their help, they get to benefit from it. And we were open to life, but not actively trying to have a kid and Monica got pregnant and what was it, December? Mm -hmm. December that same year, we had a miscarriage. That following month, or that, no, that end of that month, we actually had a, uh, our honeymoon scheduled because mm -hmm. we couldn't do it with the time allotted from my time in the Marine Corps and her time at school. Uh, so my uncle was taking us to Rome. Yeah. Uh, and so my uncle is a priest who actually studied in Rome. So he knows like five languages, seven languages. He knows where to go, what to say, how to talk, um, the pla best places to eat, but also some amazing places to go and see God. I mean, like experience his presence and get into these churches and have mass with the Pope. And it was an amazing experience and just what we needed because we were Crushed. We were crushed, yeah. We had just had this big loss. Yeah. Um, I'm about to cry. We named that child Noel because it was around Christmas. <laughs> I know, it's gonna cry today. <laughs> and so it took a little bit to get over that, but it, it was pretty quick after that, I felt like you got pregnant with Ruth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was a lot of questions on why the first miscarriage happened. And sometimes they say, well, we just don't know. God has a plan. Um, so she was born in October. Uh, that following year in July, we had another miscarriage. And, um, and so we were thinking at that time, well, God has a plan for us and one kid is it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've already had two miscarriages. Um, and, and at that time, we didn't really talk to people about miscarriages. We just assumed that it's rare, no one talks about it. 
Um, but the more we talk to people, the more we realize there's a lot of miscarriages out there. Um, and so uh, we named that one Jubilee because it's around the 4th of July. And so we decided that we were going to build a family alternatively through foster to adopt. And so we actually went and met with Catholic Charities in Houston, uh, went through the interview process, and lo and behold, Monica gets pregnant. <laughs> and so... Um, we're like, okay, maybe this is... Okay, God's calling us now. You know, just being open and and what's the plan, right? And so um, we had Marie. We had Marie. And then... Um, we're ready for another one, and Lee took a little bit longer to come, but again, we went back and explored foster to adopt, and um, in that time, you know, talked about how that would work. We went through the application process, and, um, and then Lee came, Lee was born. I think through all this, our, as a young married couple who was going through this first miscarriage, we learned really fast and hard that like we had to rely on God because we had each other, as, but we had just been married. We had, you know, um, we were still trying to figure out marriage and to go through something like that, we had to, we had to call on God and get peace from Him and strength from Him. Um, and so I, as much as that still brings a lot of raw emotions, it's the strength I think that we built up then around the rest of our family that we had to trust that God was gonna take care of us. So when I got back from Iraq, um, I moved units, and one of the blessings of moving units is I was put right next to the base chapel at Camp Lejeune. And so literally it was my barracks, the chow hall, and then the church. And so I could literally go to church at lunch because they had 12 o'clock mass, go eat something, and then go back to work. And it was very, um, at that time, my faith life was just growing. Uh, I knew a lot about Catholic teachings, but I didn't know it well. And so they started offering RCIA. So even though I was confirmed Catholic, I went through RCIA. I was going to daily mass as much as I could make it. And I felt like I had a lot of growth because of the sacraments. Receiving sacraments daily really helped me grow spiritually. And I feel like when we first got married, it was hard to go to daily mass, but we were able to make it to Sunday mass every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and now I feel like y'all go to daily mass three times a week, sometimes Thanks more. And, and it's like, I feel like that's a great opportunity for the kids to go to daily mass and then mm -hmm to have them serve at Daily Mass. We are the Hansik family, and, and we are joyfully big! Woo! has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.